Lines can turn into escapees so easily. Solution, make as few of them as possible in the first place. G'day, I'm Dave Johnson, FMC spray drift expert, and over the past 12 years or so, I spent a lot of my working life developing tank mix agents that help farmers get more area sprayed with less risk of losing that spray over the fence. So, what are fines? Fines are those tiny spray droplets, smaller than 200 microns, that every ground rig boom spray nozzle makes at least some of, no matter how coarse it's rated. It's these droplets that can so easily find their way into trouble when they escape from your nozzle spray fan. Fines are so light that they can hang around in the air for hours, and in that time the wind can take them wherever it decides to. In this series of videos, we're going to show you how you can reduce your risk of having the chemicals you're spraying move off target. Our take home message is simple, make as few fines as possible while still getting the spray job done well. And by using the drift reducing adjuvant on course, you'll be making as few fines as possible in the first place. As well as ensuring your spray job is being done well, there's going to be less chance of chemicals escaping from your paddock. One of the ways you can encourage a fine to turn into an escapee is by driving the spray rig too fast. We understand that production pressures and spray windows force you to get over the ground as fast as possible to finish the spray job. But remember, the least productive spray job is the one you have to repeat. It's very easy for fine droplets to disobey your will. By travelling faster, you give them so much more of a chance to misbehave. With more speed, fine droplets have more opportunity to be pulled out of the spray fan by the movement of air as they make their way to the ground. More speed creates the opportunity for fine droplets to be projected upwards by the greater wake effects created behind the boom. It also creates more of a horizontal trajectory, which means that there is more of a chance that the fine droplets are captured by standing stubble rather than the ground where the weeds are. Finally, more speed can create more of a shadowing effect behind stubble or other weeds, and this means you might miss hitting a weed altogether. Travel speed consideration goes hand in hand with spray volume per hectare. Travelling slower gives you the opportunity to increase your spray volume and generate more droplets to achieve better coverage. This is very important when spraying into stubble. But if you really feel you need to be making fine droplets for better efficacy, then you really should be applying them as slowly as possible and in as close to ideal spraying conditions as you can. If you decide you simply can't afford to slow down, then you must accept that this is increasing the risk of off-target chemical movement. You should not push any other spraying boundaries, particularly use the coarsest spray quality, be aware of what spray quality your nozzle selection is really producing, change your nozzle to one that produces fewer fines, use on-course DRA, and increase spray volume. You should also set your boom height as low as possible, and above all, avoid spraying in still, excessively windy, and most importantly, inversion conditions. You don't have to build a fortress to stop your escapees, but by consistently following a few basic principles and not cutting corners while you're spraying, you can contain them behind your fence much more effectively. 